Tanny's second journey to visit some of my friends involved a trip to the northwest of England with Manchester visible on the horizon. It was only about 120 kilometres, but as it was cross country, it took a good four hours with stops for food and drink and the inevitable comfort breaks. Something I hadn't told Tanny about was the fact that these friends had a large bouncy golden Labrador who wasn't too keen on other dogs. This could be interesting, I thought to myself, picturing tables knocked over and blood on the carpets. I knew that there was a golf course close by, so I was going to suggest that we take the dogs there to meet on neutral territory. My hostess was way ahead of me with that thought, and almost as soon as we had arrived, the four of us were across the road to the golf course. Needless to say, there was nothing to worry about. Apart from some typical canine sniffing, which Tanny normally hates, the two dogs were off across the course, chasing each other and just getting on with life. In case you're worried, there is a public footpath through the course, so we weren't risking the destruction of the greens or the disturbance of the immaculately raked bunkers. Even going out in the host's car, where the two dogs had to get into the back, there were absolutely no cross barks, and the dogs settled down next to each other to enjoy the journey. The lab, being younger than Tanny, was able to jump into the car, but I had to lift Tanny in and out, but even this was problem free. My hostess and I and our canine companions went out in the van for a trip to a beautiful local town, and again the dogs settled into the back of the van without trouble. This time it was Tanny's territory, but apart from more muddy footprints on her duvet, they were as good as gold, and they stayed in the van watching us as we sat and had a lovely lunch outside one of the many small restaurants in the town. We were lucky, as we were able to park right outside, so we could enjoy the warm autumn air at an outside table, and the two dogs watched hungrily from the van, occasionally popping over to see if we had anything they'd be interested in eating. This trip was also the first we had the opportunity to sleep in the van for real, after I'd pulled the bed down and spread my sheet and duvet out, a certain canine was up and had taken up residence across the bed, so I was left to wriggle down and keep my legs bent around her. However, it was very comforting to have a live, friendly bed warmer on board, and we both fell asleep in no time. The second night, I made sure I took the lengthways portion, leaving Tanny to snuggle down along my length. This worked even better, and again we slept through the howling winds that sprung up, and that my hosts noticed in their house.